Good day students! Welcome to our subject Physical Education 2. I am your lecturer, Mr. Rodolfo B. Fajardo Jr. We will discuss the lesson 3. It is about the dance fundamental and pattern. The topics that we are going to discuss later on are about the chapter 5. We have dance terminologies, feet, arms, wrist, hand, and fingers, basic arms and feet positions, fundamental positions in dance, fundamental movements, and the last one is the dance formations. For our chapter 6, we have music pattern, key to system of counting. For our chapter 7, we have basic folk dance steps. Chapter 8, selected Philippines folk dances. And the chapter 9 is about the foreign folk dances. Let us now begin in our introduction. When an individual moves in response to a particular rhythm or music, we call the movements as rhythmic movements or rhythms. And also, it refers to movements set to music where there emerges organization, structure, and pattern. It is also a composition that implies arrangement of parts into a form. Let us now proceed to our chapter 5. Topic 1. It is about the dance terminologies. This time, I will give you a question again related to our topic. Why terminologies are important to a dance? If you are sitting in the lobby, you will often hear our dancers calling out the proper terminology as they dance. Not only does saying the word as you do to the movement increase the overall usage of the brain. It cements the meaning with the action, creating better retention. So let me give you some example of terminologies. We have adagio. It means slow music. Pivot. Turn on the support foot. Put. Placing or replacing the light lifted foot back and bring your weight on it. Point. Foot point in the extension of the leg without heel on the floor or weight on it. Promenade. Partners turn open running in the direction of dance, apart but holding. Let us now proceed to our topic 2. Feet Coordination and Dancing Keep your feet still or just shuffle through letting your feet do whatever they want. Just focus on your arms. Practice moving your feet and legs, letting your arms rest. And then, once you're able to do each part smoothly on its own, combine the two pieces into one organic movement. For our topic 3, it is about the arms coordination in dancing. For example, movements in dance and sports usually involve doing something with your arms and with your feet. Keep your feet still or just shuffle through letting your feet do whatever they want. Just focus on your arms. Next is Practice moving your feet and legs, letting your arms rest. Topic 4 is about the wrist, hand, and fingers. As dancers, our hands and wrists help us to execute choreography, express ourselves in movement, and propel us through floor work and more. 
yet the challenges and habits of modern life, such as constantly being on devices, can bring down how well our hands and wrists feel and function. Winter is also coming, often bringing dry skin and increased joint stiffness. Read on for some simple solutions to these problems. Let us now proceed to our topic 5. It is about the basic arms and feet positions. First position, bring heels close to touch toes apart. Second position, bring feet apart sideward. Third position, bring the heel of one foot to touch the instep of the other foot. Fourth position, Bring one foot in front of the other foot to walk strike. Like what we have in the example picture. For our topic 6, it is about the fundamental positions in that. There are five fundamental or basic positions in dance that are commonly termed as first position, second position, third position, fourth position, and fifth position of the feet and arms. Feet heels close together, those apart with an angle of about 45 degrees. Like what we have in the given example picture. For our topic 7, it is about the fundamental movements. Fundamental movement skills categories include balance skills, movements where the body remains in place but moves around its horizontal and vertical axis. Next is locomotor skills, such as running, jumping, hoping, and galloping. The last one is the ball skills such as catching, throwing, kicking, underarm roll, and striking. For our topic 8, it is about the dance formations. Formation dance is a style of ballroom dancing. It is patterned or shadow team dancing by couples in a formation team. The choreography may be based on a particular dance or a medley of dances. Formation dancing may be done for exhibition or for competition between teams. There is also a type of formation in Banghara. Let us now move on to our chapter 6. Topic 1, Music Pattern. Classical examples include Aria, Madrigal, Sonata, Cantata, and the last one is Serenata. And also remember that contemporary song forms are commonly broken down into three major components. We have verse, bridge, and chorus. In our topic 2, it is about the key to system of counting. So this time, let me ask you a question. How do you count in dance? In music, there are typically four counts or beats per measure. In dance, a measure is usually musically paired with a second measure. These two measures equal a total of eight counts, 
which is why dancers count in sets of 8 by 8 counts, keep track of the beat and tempo, but break up the song into manageable sections. Let us now move on to our chapter 7. It is about the basic folk dance steps. What is it important to know the basic steps in folk dance? Many people enjoy learning basic steps in folk dance in order to participate in either a social or religious tradition or sometimes just to get some exercise. Whatever your reason for learning, folk dancing is a fun form of movement that involves dancers from all ages and backgrounds. Let us now proceed to our next chapter, which is the chapter 8. It is about the selected Philippines folk dances. The Philippines enjoys a rich cultural heritage, which includes a diverse collection of traditional dances. From the well-known national dance, the Tinikling, which pays homage to the movements of a much loved bird, to dances that reflect elements of daily Philippine life. These folk dances all offer a glimpse into the history of the country. Here are some examples of traditional folk dances of the Philippines. The Philippines has many popular folk dances which have evolved and changed as they have been passed down from generation to generation. Although a particular dance might be performed slightly differently from one region to the next, it is remains true to its roots. Here are some of the most popular dances from the region. Let us begin with the Itik Itik. The best description of the Itik Itik is that the steps mimic the way a duck walks, as well as the way it splashes water on its back to attract a mate. According to popular tradition, the dance was created by a lady named Kana, who choreographed the steps while dancing at baptismal party. The other guests copied her movements and everyone liked to dance so much that it has been passed along ever since. Here are some example picture. Next is the Tinikling. The Tinikling is considered by many to be the Philippines national dance. The dance's movements Imitate the movements of the tickling bird as it walks around through tall grass and between tree branches. People perform the dance using bamboo poles. And also the dance is composed of three basic steps which include singles, doubles, and hops. It is also look similar to the playing jump rope. Except that the dancers perform the steps are rounded between the bamboo poles and the dance becomes faster until someone makes a mistake and the next set of dancers takes a turn. Here are some example picture. Next is the Sayaw sa Bangko. The Sayaw sa Bangko is performed on the top of a narrow bench. Dancers need good balance as they go through a series of movements that include some impressive acrobatics. And also this dance traces its roots back to the areas of Pangasipisan, Lingayen, and Pangasinan. Here are some example pictures.
Next is the pandango sa ilaw. The pandango sa ilaw is similar to a Spanish fandango, but the pandango is performed while balancing three or laps, one on the hand and one in each hand. It is also a lively dance that originated on Lubang Island. The music is in 3-4 time and it is usually accompanied by castanets. Here are some example pictures. Next is the maglalatik. The maglalatik is a mock war dance that depicts a fight over coconut meat, a highly prized food. The dance is broken into four parts. Two devoted to the battle and two devoted to reconciling. The men of the dance wear coconut shells as part of their costumes, and they slap them and read them with the music. The maglalatik is danced in the religious procession during the fiesta of Binyan as an offering to San Isidro de Labrador, the patron saint of farmers. Here are some example pictures. Next is the Coraza. The Coraza is described as a dance of courtship and it is often performed at weddings and other social occasions. The dance has three parts. The couple first performs a waltz. In the second part, the music sets a faster phase as the man pursues the woman around the dance floor in a chase. To finish, the music becomes even faster as the man wins over the woman with his mating dance. Here are some example pictures. Next is La Jota Moncadena. The La Jota Moncadena is adapted by the Filipinos from an old Spanish dance. It is a combination of Spanish and Ilocano dance steps set to Spanish music and castanets. A more solemn version of this dance is sometimes used to accompany a funeral procession, but is also performed at celebration. Here are some example picture of La Jota Moncadena. Next is the Cariñosa. The Cariñosa is the dance made for flirting. The dancers make a number of flirtatious movements as they hide behind fans or handkerchiefs and peek out at one another. The essence of the dance is the courtship between two sweethearts. Here is the example picture of the Cariñosa. Next is the sortido. Sortido literally means assortment, and this square dance combines influences of French, Spanish, and Mexican dance. Traditionally, the sortido is performed by a head couple accompanied by two other couples who lead all the dancers through various formations that resemble an old-fashioned quadrille. Here is the example picture of the sortido. Next is the sinkil. The sinkil is the dance traditionally performed by single women to attract the attention of potential suitors. The dancers perform a series of graceful movements as they step in and out from between bamboo poles which are rhythmically clapped together. Fans and scarves are often used to enhance the dancer's movements. Here are some example pictures.
Next is the polka bop. The polka bop shows some European influence in its steps. The dance is composed of nine different steps which include various movements such as fluttering, stepping, heel to toe, a reenactment of a bullfight, and even a leisurely walk. Here is the example picture of polka bop. And let us now move on to our chapter 9. It is about the foreign folk dances. International folk dance includes Balkan dance, Middle Eastern dance, Contra dance, Hungarian dance, Polka, Chinese dance, and Japanese dance. Clubs featuring this ethnic dance genres are enjoyed by non-professional dancers for entertainment. Here are some example pictures. So what do you think are the foreign dances? Let me give you some examples. As you can see in our given example pictures, they are all the example of the foreign dances. Let us begin in Brazil. We have Samba, China, Dragon Dance, Cuba, it is a salsa, Russia, we have ballet, Switzerland, it is traditional folk dance. In Argentina, we have tango. Japanese, we have kabuki. Austria, we have Venice waltz. We are already done for our discussion for today. Let us now proceed to our references. See you to our next session. We are going to discuss by next meeting the lesson 4. We have the chapter 10 and 11. In chapter 10, we have introduction to recreational dances. And for our chapter 11, we have the social dance and types of social dance. So please get ready for our next meeting. Thank you for listening and watching. God bless.